team. You know, he's, he's kind of the pause three, but still on a carry hero. Yeah. Oh, we're going to get things underway. The draft has begun. So we'll see which of those heroes come out here. We kind of touched a little bit upon the silencer having been a key hero. I think the other one, when it came to secret during Lance Chance qualifiers, we saw them a bit. And Nick's assassin for Zayas was just... He was so good on this hero, and Secret was so good at playing around the vision he gave and the initiations that he could set up. Yeah, and the, the silence that you talked about. First phase priority now. Banned out in the, the first phase there by Fnatic. And Primal Beast, uh, a hero that we've seen so much, so much play through LCQ and into the group stage. And pretty decent uh, flexibility, but I've, I've got to say I've enjoyed it much, much more from the two and three roles than anywhere else we've seen. Yeah, I think... The core role is where this hero looks best, but uh, you know, the fact it can be played in the support, it, it adds a little bit of extra value if suddenly you get later on the draft and something really stands out as like a, a key hero to, um, you know, win you the game, whether it's a core or just, or your primal beast you feel like has been countered and you're like, okay, we need to put this on a support so it, you know, the impact is minimized. Is this, is this morphling time for Fnatic? We've seen a lot of these first phase, you know, last pick of the first phase morphling picks into the triple, oh, hello. <laughs> Bump into Zayats. How you doing? <laughs> yeah, come around, getting a, bit, getting a bit close and comfy there, Zayats. He's in the good spirits. That's a good sign when I see that. Like, he's nice and awake. I saw Nisha there with his hoodie on. He, he was looking a little sleepy, like he might need a little face wash, but the rest is secret. They're, they're, looking, <laughs> they're looking good. And when it comes to one of the players we haven't talked about, Rezo is a TI beast. When it comes to like players who show up and play well at TI, Rezo is one of the first names I think of. This is a guy who I think stood in for Team Empire like many years back. And as a standing, he carried Team Empire to top eight finish. Like he is, and with DC, he got had a second place runner up, all right? So he's an absolute yeah. monster when it comes to, to TI performances. Yeah, yeah, absolutely is. Five, he's had some some great times. He's been he's been playing on a lot of te you know these big teams as well. Thinking back on it, Vertus Pro, the forward J Storm for a little bit. Yeah, yeah. and that's the thing. He's taken a lot of teams that were kind of dark horses or not expected to do well and did well. Like that DC team, a lot of people had like finishing near the bottom. The VGJ team that crushed like their group stage and then you know unfortunately met OG and stuff in the bracket. Like they weren't expected to be one of the top teams. So uh, it feels like. He's been a part of a lot of these underdog teams who have overperformed when it comes to TI. Yeah, and it was kind of interesting hearing Puppy say, I think it was his interview at the end of LCQ, about Resolution joining and the fact that Rezo's idea of how he wanted the game to be played was already kind of cemented in his mind, how he felt he wanted to play rather than, you know, fitting the team style or ideas of what was going on. So he's kind of merged his play style and you know coming from a carry player into the position three it's uh it's been looking pretty good for those kind of players in this matter in particular because pause three is basically just another carry anyway but yeah you're still playing mars and beastmaster from time to time but you can still pull out like a marana or something that we've seen from him yeah yeah oh yeah his marana that was amazing to watch he was he was carrying that game so curious to see where he ends up this game the primal beast definitely a candidate for his hero but that could also be the mid laner so We'll see where this draft goes. You touched on yeah, what Fnatic might pick up with that fourth pick of the draft. Like usually, that's where you do see the morphlings or these heroes that you know you pick up and then you ban out the counters. It's kind of interesting they just go for a tiny, um, which is you know likely going to be a four position with the Enigma. I guess it can flex to the mid lane depending on the matchup, but it does feel like that's you know not generally how we see teams utilize first pick. Usually, you want to pick up some kind of you know game winning hero in that fourth pick. Yeah, I'm, I'm wondering if this is them toying with uh, another idea of how to deal with a primal beast. Because we've seen we've seen a few heroes, you know, the uh, the good old Disruptor has, has been one of them, where you glimpse him away, you make sure he doesn't keep trampling forward, you've got Kinetic Field to stop him from playing aggressively. Maybe Tiny is another one where you've got Avalanche Toss to kind of disrupt primal beast, pre-BKB anyway, in terms of his initiation. Because we've seen beasts dive in with the onslaught, 2,000 range initiation, then you get tossed even deeper. Uh, that could cause some struggles. Yeah. It's uh, definitely... The Primal Beast feels like one of these heroes that can look amazing until it doesn't, and then when it doesn't, it looks really questionable. Like, you're like, oh, why did he just dive into five heroes and, you know, kind of feed or, you know, miss his uh, initiation? So uh, we'll see what kind of Primal Beast... He shows up here, but it's one. Yeah, it's just it's just funny to see because when when you mess up with Primal Beast, it's it's extra punishing with the the onslaught. Oh, the Earth Spirit coming out again. So I think that's that's three mm. games on the trot now where Secret have gone this. They two owed Beast Coast picking up this Earth Spirit for Zayats. 
An interesting one, because we're, we, we're much more used to, like you say, the Nyx Assassin, the Tusk, the Tiny, the, these other heroes that are very adept at kind of rolling into team fights and starting things off. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a comfort pick when it comes to Zayed, so not too surprised to see it picked up because of that reason. Um, in fact, it's his most played hero of all time when it comes to uh, competitive Dota, so uh, I think very much like if they're going to secret when it comes to Earth Spirit, it's like, if it's worth if it's viable in the meta they're going to want to pick it um maybe not first phase because it's not considered to be like the best four position but they'll pick it up somewhere in the draft yeah he's a real handy hero to yeah, front line along with the primal beast now you've got two two incredible initiators right this this double strength melee 2000 range initiation duo between the beast and the earth spirit and this will allow you to pick pretty much any number of of ranged carry or damage dealer from range We've already seen them pair these up with like a sniper or a lash rack. You know, added a bit of tower damage from lash could be pr pretty nice yeah. here. As well as the fact we've seen lash as not a counter, but a hero that can do well against Enigma's black hole. Yes. Yeah, you don't feel like you're just taken out of the fight completely when you get black hole. And perhaps a little surprisingly, lash rack so far the most picked hero of uh, these TI group stage. I don't know if that yeah. will necessarily remain the case, but and there's a lot of heroes with a similar number of picks, but it's sporting a 50% win rate over 20 games. Yeah, maybe a, a little bit of a surprise there. I mean, you know, Shadow Fiend, Marcy, Primal Beast, no, no surprises <laughs> whatsoever with all those. Yep. Last track's been a, a shining star. It's got Crystal Maiden now for Fnatic. Yep. I'm on board the CM hype trade. I mean, she's just a five. Like, she's not doing anything super flashy, but I, I think she works as this like you know decent lane securer um just has kept receiving these little mini buffs over time she's still squishy she's still slow but uh, as far as securing her lane particularly with carries who have like a lot of kill potential like i want to see cm paired with a kill lane you don't pick cm to me with like your super hard carries like i was about to say if they pick a tb here i'm gonna look really dumb but i, I don't think you want to play your tb type heroes <laughs> with cm and having a blood seek is much nicer so now you've got blood right into frostbite Lots of abilities there to kind of catch out a Primal Beast or an Earth Spirit and make sure that they're not diving you. Now, if you're outputting damage onto your opponents, they're going to be a little more tentative with their own aggression and temper that a little bit more. Yep. I also like the Maiden just, just with the aura here with Enigma and Tiny as well. Yeah. If it is a four Tiny, you know, we've seen a lot more of this phase boots build going for phase then into the blink. So having that mana regeneration just running around the map, you know, spamming Eidolons on the Enigma also helps out tremendously from that Maiden's aura. Yeah, a lot of these side lanes are going like casual bassies and stuff. So CM kind of, you know, means maybe you don't need to get that casual bassie. Um, at the same time, I don't know how early this aura comes online. Usually you want to get, you want to you go one one zero first, So the aura doesn't yeah. come until level three at the earliest. So um, I feel like in the past CM aura was like super sick and it just got nerfed too much. And it hasn't really been, since CM, you know, got dumpstered, all the buffs to make CM relevant again, none of them are really on the aura. The only aura buff CM has gone was like when they increased the effectiveness on yourself with the aura. But like, the, the, I like the spell as like this team thing. Like, I, I, think it, I think it was good when the, the aura like really helped out your whole team. Well, what was it? The aura gave like magic resistance or something a few years back, right? Oh, there, there was, well, you said, the, I don't know, do you still have the talent where it, like, um, has the mana cost reduction talent? I think they got rid of that, right? On yeah. the aura? Because um, it used to be, like, you'd pick CM with, like, a Storm or a Tinker, and they had this, like, mana cost reduction that was, like, global. <laughs> um, but, yeah, that's gone now, I think. Yeah, looking at the talents of CM, it's, it's no longer there. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> for an aura, it's been changed quite, quite a lot yeah. over the past oh, a couple of years, yeah. yeah. 7.32 self bonus factor increase from three to four so you have this yeah global aura that's not it's more a self aura like i look at this now it's like four times on yourself like is this really an aura it's you're getting you're getting this spell for yourself not for your team anymore it only goes up to 1.5 mana regen at level four like it used to it used to be such a sick global aura and now it's just yeah now it's just some greedy ass thing for five positions to get yeah, yeah, used to give magic resistance back at 7.31. I, I knew I wasn't going crazy. It was, it was definitely, okay. definitely there at one point. I used to yeah, give uh, every time Maiden cast a spell, give a burst of mana to people. Yeah, the mana, that, that, that aura's what? had some wild changes. Oh, I did not remember that one. Man, Dota's, Dota changes quickly. 
Yeah, it does. Well, uh, yeah, replenishes mana to allies within 1,200 radius whenever Maiden cast any of her abilities. Well, that's uh, that's long gone. <laughs> Sad <laughs> times. All, all these Maiden players complaining about move speed, but you should be complaining about your aura being changed so often. But anyway, back into draft. Viper in for Team Secret and a couple of couple of bands out from Fnatic on TA and Gyro. Yeah, getting Rezo, some of these kind of semi-carry off laners, the Earth Spirit Viper lane looks pretty damn potent. Not a fun lane to go against if you're a Crystal Maiden. Um, but at the same time, like, if you can position well, like, I think the fact that your CM has firepower and kill threat, like, you know, if Earth Spirit oversteps, if you're if Viper, you know, if you any kind of rotation, that's the thing with Viper. Like, it's kind of like this win the lane, but then you get ganked and kind of, off, you know, win the lane, lose the game. But I think with Viper, it's like you win your lane, but then any kind of rotation comes and you have no way to protect yourself. Five seconds remaining. Yeah, and it often feels like you have to you have to play into the Viper's lane, right? It's not not a hero that wants to be moving or roaming, very slow and sluggish. It's yeah. nice to have Earth Spirit and Primal Beast both in these gap closers that can chase people down and allow that Viper to ch you know, give chase as well. Team yeah, Primal Beast, very good hero to rotate to some of these slide lanes. And Fnatic go Queen of Pain, all right. Oh. Not something I've seen much of, I feel like, during this uh, group stage so far. Yeah, another another tempo here. I mean, Enigma, Bloodseeker, Queen of Pain. It feels like Enigma's the position one in this game, and Bloodseeker, Queen of Pain are, are going to be running around killing people. There's a, a lot of magic damage and, and chase here from Fnatic. But actually, team fight around you know, Freezing Field, Black Hole, Sonic Wave. Yeah, I, that, That's scary. Yeah, I feel like they're going for this very mid-game centric draft there's no scaling there's no real late game i mean yeah enigma is late game and quad bloodseeker you know they're at least semi carries of sorts but now with this sniper pickup <laughs> they don't want to go late game and secret to pick this hero that kind of just turtles it up um and oh they actually did this before they're going to do safe lane viper we've seen this during the last chance qualifier where they have like two side lane like heroes that are kind of both off laners and they put nisha on this uh mid carry so Safe lane Viper for a Chrysalis. Cool. So that's how they're going to pick up the tempo then and actually try and fight back into Fnatic. I mean, how, how does how does Viper do against an Enigma lane, though? Um, It's going to be with an Enchantress, I guess. Yeah, I, I think, oh, you you kind of win the lane, but you're it's just annoying because Enigma's just going to keep denying your creeps. Like, I think Enigma has to be pretty careful not to get caught out there um, because I think Ench Viper have a ton of kill potential. With that said, I... It may be Earth Spirit with the Viper. I think the Enchantress going to the offlane with Rezzer's Primal Beast maybe makes more sense. It's, you know, let's put range support with the melee you know, right. core and put melee support with the range core. Uh, I think doing double range and double melee is just weaker. So we'll see. And I think if you're anything, you want the Earth Spirit playing with the Viper because you feel like that's a, a lane where there's some serious kill threat and Earth Spirit maybe brings a bit better initiation compared to the Enchantress. Yeah, and, and having displacement as well. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right there. Roll in, you kick back, you make sure that whoever's being gone on, if it is that Enigma, gets stuck inside uh, the Nether Toxin or just dragged back into more poison attacks as game one between Secret and Fnatic nearly ready to get underway here. First group stage match of day two for TI 2022. As we get ourselves prepped for this one. Gods, are you are you leaning one way or the other? If, if this was blind and you just oh. saw drafts, which one do you favor? Ignore the team names. Ignore the teams. I, I would say secret. Um, I like that. Like you see the fanatic draft and think, uh, to me, it it doesn't scale that well. And it's like, okay, well, how well can they kind of crush the game and snowball and you know take objectives, go high ground? And it's not that well. Like this sniper pick feels like a this pick that gives secret better late game and a way to guarantee that it goes into the late game. So you think the sniper is like a gotcha pick right at the end? Yeah, I think it's, I mean, for as far as 10th pick heroes go, it, it feels perfect. Um, I think often these teams who play with second pick, they get to 10th pick of the draft and they're like, oh, there's, you know, we can get this and it's good, but it's not going to win us the game. I feel like Secret have managed to really nail the draft with the sniper pick. Yeah, it looks incredibly good. And then if you add in team names there, does that, does that just add to Secret's <laughs> cause? No, no, I actually think the teams are pretty evenly matched. I'm a big fanat fanatic believer at this TI. Um, you know, I've, every land of infinite goes so i'm a fanatic believer and then they kind of disappoint but you know i'm ready to be hurt one more time they're kind of the the quincy crew of sea where you know they're consistent they do so well online and you get hype for them at land and then it's like oh they didn't actually do that well but you know let's go let's go fanatic <laughs> but, but yeah i i yeah i think two is pretty even yeah 
I like, how can you not be hyped with a DJ Tiny? Like, okay, it's not DJ Enigma like we used yeah. to see back in, you know, like the middle, middle of major or whatever it was. It's going to be the Jabs Enigma here. But we'll see how they do as game one's underway. Fnatic and Secret already smoking themselves across the map for these early Observer Wards. Try to get a bit of intel to start off this game. That's going to be very important for them. I mean, it's, it's also an RML Queen of Pain. You know, this, this lad over the past couple of years has absolutely proven that he is a top tier mid. And Queen of Pain has been, you know, one of his signatures for, for quite some time. Yeah. I remember it was during the heyday of Virtus Pro where they were like the, one of the best, the best team in the world for a long period of time and no one was like the best mid laner. I felt like Armel was the only mid who could actually go yeah. up against him. Armel and Sumail. Like it, those were, I, to me, the consensus top three mid laners in the world when it came to like mechanics and crushing mid lane. Because around then that's when Miracle was playing more safe lane. So, um, you know, he's not quite the Armel. Of all, I mean, I think also just mid lane in general is just not a lane where you see that, the same kind of dominance. I think there's a lot more parity between all mid laners, but um, yeah, he's playing a Queen of Pain. He was hoping, I think, for the Primal Beast mid, which is, I think, largely why they went for the Queen of Pain. And that's the other reason why this sniper is a bit of a, a gotcha pick is because Fnatic had this idea where, hey, we get Quap versus melee mid, we crush the lane, we win the game, and all of a sudden you've got Quap versus sniper, which is not as good a lane um I and mean, yeah Cop probably kind of kind of loses this matchup yeah especially once we get these wraith bands going for the sniper things get very challenging for you and just thinking back to, to what you just said you know no one sumail armel I, I just couldn't help but think about storm spirit and where where that hero is at the moment because <laughs> all, all three of them back in their heyday were exceptional storm players from the mid laners and one oh. of the, the key elements for them don't worry storm will make appearance got... eg let me tell you they're six and oh they're one, oh, yeah. they're one loss away from first picking Storm Spirit for the rest of the TI. All it's going to take is one loss. One loss, and they're first picking Storm for the rest of the tournament. So, Storm will come. We'll see it. Bulba just dumps a thousand pages of draft notes, and he's like, this yeah. is the only page we need. Panic. Storm Spirit first pick. <laughs> yep. Uh, but, yep. EG, well, they, I mean, great great stuff for them. But right now, yeah, Secret and Fnatic. It's uh, what's, about, oh. what's Jabs doing? Uh, lane swaps, it looks like. He's, okay. So you look at Secret. Their cores are kind of chilling in the jungle too. Uh, looks like supports are getting lanes. DJ's like, sweet, I'm a tiny. Let's play core now. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm going to tell you, gods, Jabs is not lane swapping. Jabs is jungling. Oh, level one jungle. Even better. So, Hell yes. Uh, I'm, I'm, this is the one thing I've been say, saying for a while. I'm like, Ice Rogue, please bring back junglers. Level one, like Chen and Ench, they're no longer jungles. That's like, to me, such a classic quintessential do part of dota history is just having junglers and i swear as like nah, we don't have that anymore as long as legion commander doesn't make a comeback in that arena i'm fine <laughs> no um, iron talent uh, yeah, <laughs> no iron talent yeah uh, but, but I, I i fully agree i miss the days of, of enigma chen and chantress even like you know you think back to to puppy you know he, he he pioneered a lot of these storm spirit or shadow demon smoke jungling all these little tricks you could do uh, yeah jungling was a, a fun little part of the game as, oh, Chrysalis taking a lot of damage down bottom. Three heroes going to come in. Think about diving. The Crystal Nova slows him down. He pops his stick. 50 HP remaining. Raven giving chase. The roll will connect from Zayat. Holding back Raven, but the blood right. Crystalis trying to dodge it. Gets to the distance. Turns on the Raven, but first blood is there for Jao. Raven going to get himself away from Puppy. An impetus shot is coming, and a kick from Zayat. Takes down the Bloodseeker in that one-for-one -one trade and jabs. A little stuck under the tier one now. But Zayat's with a missed roll, and Jao coming back in with a mango to cast some more spells. Might be able to do a bit more damage here to Zayat's with his Eidolons. Still pumping the right clicks into Puppy. And that Frostbite's there. Hold back the Ench. A close fought battle. Who came out on top? I don't know. It didn't feel great for Fnatic. I mean, they get the first blood, so I think that evens it up a bit. But they committed way too hard, used a ton of regen, missed a few spells along the way. And it just took way more effort than they had hoped for to kill Chrysalis there. So I'd say... It didn't feel like a good move, but first blood goal just giving a making it a bit more even. So uh, let's just say no one. It was an even. It was a trade. An even trade. I mean, do we get our lanes set up as they as they want now? No, no more jungling Enigma. <laughs> oh, poor Tiny DJ's like, man, I was having such a good time. Thirteen last hits, and now he has to give up his lane for a core. Sad days. So what what were they trying to avoid, or who was trying to avoid what? Oh, um, all the kickback. Yeah. Zayat, he's level three Whoa. on this Earth Spirit, so he was able to get in on top of the Maiden and, and unlock this puppy, the Carrion Chantress, playing from this bottom lane. Oh. 
Yeah, I think it's so they really wanted this like I, I mean, for Fnatic they want this safe link Bloodseeker versus the Primal Beast and Seeker are trying to get the Viper versus the Bloodseeker. You can see the lane swap happening now. Chrysalis is walking top to meet the Bloodseeker lane. Uh, and that's why you had Enigma wasn't like the plan wasn't to jungle. It was very much just like let's make sure we get the good lane. So I'm gonna start in the jungle. And giving Tiny some early farm in CS isn't bad. Like DJ getting a super fast blink or maybe phase boots he's got queued up could really help him get off to a good start. I yeah, sure could. I mean, Crystal is still level one. Needs a bit more experience here, and DJ, he's going to spot him, but resolution nearby. And Jao coming forward as well. The level one Viper are going to get broken, beaten down by Fnatic, and they're going to go for the Primal Beast as well. Onslaught gives him the distance he needs, though, away from what is now effectively another tri lane from Fnatic top. Oh. Fnatic just making sure... Raven has a good time on this Bloodseeker, chasing around some of these easy-to-kill cores like the Viper. Chrysalis is, yeah, he's bottom two when it comes to oh, last in CS and bottom two net worth. That is yeah. sad times. Not ideal for him, but I guess he can look into the mid lane and Nisha, Nisha's saying everything is, everything is fine. Don't worry, Crystalis. I'm yeah. a sniper. I'm 24 and 12 in this lane five minutes in. Yeah, that's the thing with Secret. We touched upon it a bit during the, the pre-show is like he's Chrysalis is not really played as the carry for this team. Like we've had games where Rezo is playing Moran and stuff, and more often than not it's Nisha in the mid lane playing these more kind of scaling heroes. So this is kind of at least on some level typical for Secret. Oh I'm all back to Fountain. Well down at bottom. Jabs. The central stomp here. Gets the Malphys in onto Chrysalis and tries to dip into the trees with DJ's arrival. They turn back on Puppy and a five and a half minute rotation from the mid lane. They're actually now looking for Chrysalis, a bonus kill potentially for Armel. As DJ does have a toss, looking for the Viper and finds him. Throws him back into the Queen of Pain and his level two Viper, not able to withstand the damage, just stands his grounds, accepts his fate. And Fnatic, tri lane bot into tri lane top, into tri lane bot again, while top lane, Jow is a little isolated now. Zayats and Resolution pairing up to kill the Crystal Maiden. Just kill after kill in both of these side lanes. Yeah, it's a bit of a bloodbath when it comes to, for Secret, hunting down and killing the CM a couple times, but for Fnatic, it's killing the Viper. Zero three now, Crystalis. Like, you're shutting down an enemy core. It just feels like Fnatic are in a much better position because of this exchange. And now they're playing with this catapult bottom. They are diving tower again. Seeing Puppy in the tree line, the toss across. Armel trying to grab Jeez. Chrysalis as well. Secret coming to try and fight this, but Armel's already blinked out there. Jams with a TP. The he missed the roll, Ooh. but the damage is good. Secret get the takedown on the Enigma. Yeah. Fnatic really aggressively diving towers, and Armel a part of everything. Yep. I, the fact he. he he rotated gank bottom and then stayed bottom. <laughs> he didn't go back mid. They gave the lane to, to Januel's CM. Like, all the Fnatic supports are getting so much in terms of early levels in CS. Like, both CM and Tiny are level 4, almost level 5 on Tiny. Yeah. yeah that's crazy. I mean, I, again, the upside is this sniper with double wraith bands. Has treads as well. Good blink away from RML. He gets out of the reach of Zyat's roll. roll. But also, I, just, I think Raven having a decent time top now as he was left alone. Yeah, he's been given a, a free farm lane, essentially, playing against just the Primal Beast. This is the lane he wanted from the start and why things were so wacky. Uh, it's a pretty much a lane where he's going to go uncontested. Uh, but Secret, you know, this game's gone fine for them. I mean, I talk about the support levels. Puppy, level five and a half, so he's got treads already, and he's leveling up Impetus. He's already looking like he's you know, going to be scaling into a kind of semi-core here with more net worth than his Viper. Uh, so Puppy, I think, happy to play Dota this way. I mean, what what happens to the Viper if if he's meant to be win the lane, lose the game? What happens if you lose the lane? Do you do you win the game? Let's hope so. I <laughs> support Viper. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, they, it's, they're losing this lane, but they're not losing all the lanes. I think that's a big thing. Another toss back bottom, though. And once again, it's Armel here, ready to find another kill. He's got Sonic Wave if he needs it. He's going to throw it. Just kill him off. Go on. Chuck it at Chrysalis. Does pop his magic wand, but it's not to be. Another death. Four on the board now for this Viper. As Armel, 3-0-1 on the Queen of Pain. And really making things work. And, and leaving that mid lane where he was suffering. And oh, look, looking at the mid lane, actually. The rupture comes. 
Raven hits level six and rotates in. Aggressive play in on Tanisha, but resolution with the onslaught, nah, not enough space for him. We'll get on top of DJ here with a trample, but he's held back by the Malefice. Frostpoint now comes, and resolution's gone too deep. Jabs has the black hole to hold him in place, while Puppy skirting the edges of this fight and trying to chip away at Jabs, but trapped in the frostbite and dead the hell bear though tomato comes in and slaps down jabs at the end oh secret yep. losing three though great fight the high ground black hole and puppy a little unlucky actually had an impetus miss from the low ground or that would have been a much quicker and easier kill on the enigma but that's partly why jabs was playing on that high ground and as a result yeah it massive fight they do that without the queen of pain who's kind of been their big rotating playmaker we'll see it all again here just a great rotation great use of this early rupture knowing that there's no way for sniper to tp out with the cm there yeah that 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 pushes raven now right up at the top of the net worth four thousand two hundred for him sniper was looking like he'd be the the king of this game but getting taken down a notch there as yeah, Fnatic really, really kicking it into fifth gear, breaking down as there wasn't really a laning stage, was they gods? They broke down the lane no. stage three minutes in. CM mid going to get picked off with a nice rotation from Zayats. But yeah, this has just felt like constant action and movement all around these different lanes. Uh, Secret going to kind of strike first when it comes to these objectives with the puppy edge taking a tier one tower or something he's always so good at doing on edges just pressuring early objectives just sending a creep there plus some extra right clicks and making it hard for teams to play the map when you've got to constantly defend these towers yeah cutting across into the ancients area while dj went bottom jungle found out by zayat and nisha here though i'll try the avalanche tp home but i think the damage from the sniper oh oh no it wasn't enough yeah Throughout the, throughout the avalanche, so that he knew Nisha couldn't assassinate. Like, he avalanched to TP. He didn't actually have assassinate. Not something that DJ was aware of, but just really heads up play from him. He's, by the way, super far. Phase boots already. He's about to hit level 7, so likely goes for the fast blink dagger. Man, you're going to have some incredible item timings on some of these heroes. And there is DJ. I mean, oh, yeah, look at that slow motion replay. Was that, was that 18 HP? I'm not too sure, but they're rolling into mid. Nope. Onslaught and trample on the Queen of Pain, who is silenced up. Armel turning, has the Sonic Wave to push and kill Resolution, while the Rupture on Zaya to last Raven to get the bonus kill. Another two down on the side of Secret, as Fnatic defending their mid lane and rallying around Raven to fight back. Yeah. I honestly just love the kind of aggression we're seeing from this Fnatic team. 11 kills in 11 minutes. Uh, you know, Armel's co-op has just been active all over the map. Oh, see that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the TP out from before, it looked like it wasn't a miss, but what a what a move from Fnatic just to constantly take these fights and utilize this Queen of Pain in a way where she's kind of just this big playmaker not looking to farm. They're just looking to really enable Raven to get all the space in the world to just continue getting his creeps. And it's, it's got to be a, a sick game as Raven on this Bloodseeker because there is so much action there are so many low hp heroes and then the part of the reason he was able to come into that mid lane to rupture the sniper six seven minutes in was because everyone is such low hp everyone's being run at constantly another roll guarding bottom rune zayat and puppy make sure that the queen of pain does not get the arcane yeah it feels good to have blood secret in these games where there's just constant brawling and skirmishing tp top from zayat he's still got the arcane rune and He's trying to maybe find DJ here. He's been given a lot of room to just keep on farming. They've got to know and expect that this tiny blink dagger will be coming up pretty early on. Now then you have jabs down bottom, breaking the trees, shoving that bottom wave. And Crystalis has been having a happy time for the past couple of minutes after going 0-4. Has been left alone for the most part. So now up to level 7, Bark and Blade done. You can farm jungle a little bit, but you'll have to leave that bottom tower to die. Yeah. Speaking of happy times, Puppy was just third in net worth. He just got, he just dropped from third to fourth in net worth, but um, that's a farm damage. Good sidestep from DJ. It means the roll misses, and the freezing oh, big field CMO. from Chow. Oh. There's no stun until the roll comes, but now it's allowed Armel to come in with Raven. Kill off Zayas and Resolution. Chase back on the Puppy as well. DJ will die, but I think it's all fine in the end. The trade yeah, will go juke. Fnatic's way. They land the Sonic Wave. The final touch from Raven gets him the triple kill. Oh, the CM hiding in the trees. What an ulti, that freezing field. They just walked into an absolute slaughter there as 
two melee heroes on top of a CM freezing field, and by the time they cancel it, they're just already done and dusted, and a massive team fight and cleanup going the way of Fnatic there, and all of it going Raven's way, so a very happy carry. As we'll see it all again here, the CM just teeping in at the perfect time and place. Yeah, you can almost hear DJ's comms, right? I've, I've, I've dodged the stun, I've dodged the roll, they've cast all their stuns, and Jao just comes in with a massive freezing field as DJ, he's all over the place here, and in a, in a good way, tossing back Zayat, enabling these Fnatic heroes to get the kills, and now a Frostbite on the Sniper, allowing Armel and Raven again, the two cores, coming in to pile on the Sniper and kill off Nisha. Yeah. Armel well, gets low, but not really any danger to himself. The Tiny even almost lives there. He Almost sidestepped the shrapnel at the very end, but just couldn't quite get out of range, so... Big kills going the way of Fnatic, like, killing the Sniper is... He's the number one target this game. He's the hero that you're most worried about when it comes to, you know, this game dragging on, and, you know, it will drag on. Fnatic don't have a good way to really push the tempo too much outside of the Enigma, so... They want to kind of gear up and get some good late game going themselves. Yeah, it feels like the BKB on that Bloodseeker and Queen of Pain going as Kai Sanj there. They're looking to hit that time and kind of 20 minutes in where they can take some bigger team fights. Think about Roshan, which will give them the security to go for these objectives. And DJ, 500 gold from his blinks, should synchronize pretty nicely with that as well. We've already seen how well he can do 12 out of the 16 kills he's been involved in. And DJ having a spectacular time on his tiny. Yeah. Both these mag supports are just, they're, they're in all the action. They're just, wherever the fighting goes, they're going there too. And it's been really impressive to watch Fnatic play a... <laughs> Another sick freezing field from the okay. trees. Yeah. <laughs> Even better than the last. <laughs> he got some creeps. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, Puppy did manage to swoop in and seal the center, though. Take that one away from poor Jao. Hey, secret, I've got to do something about this roll bottom mid. lane. Well, rolling in. Got the, the toss, heck. though. A little pig pole little action bait. from Tiny. Zayat, Sonic waved, and after his roll, he's connected on DJ, so Enchantress will get the kill. And a good Centaur stomp there. Attempted Illusion Rune dodge from Armel, but now the rupture with the Bloodseeker coming in from the back. They head straight for the Silencer, and a Sniper, sorry, is Nisha getting right clicked down by Raven. Puppy now trapped on the high ground, surrounded by Fnatic, and there's Crystal Maiden Ooh. to help out Raven get another double kill. 8 1 and 4 on this Bloodseeker as they charge in towards mid tier 1. Yeah, any fight Fnatic's just like, let's collapse, let's bring everybody. Five men show in the mid lane. It looked like Puppy was going to carry that fight for a second. He was doing so much impetus damage onto multiple heroes. Uh, same for the Sniper, just dishing out almost 3,000 damage as well. But Fnatic just kiting perfectly, playing the outskirts of the fights with heroes like the CM and the, and the Tiny. The CM living on a sliver of health and coming back in to throw extra Novas and Frostbites in. They just outlast Team Secret once again. Yeah, and it feels like Armel and Raven are coming in at the exact right times there. Like you said it, you called it at the start. They've kind of baited these rolls in or the onslaughts aggressively. And this allows them to see where the sniper is. They're waiting for Nisha to show before that Bloodseeker or Queen of Pain really make an appearance in these fights. Yeah. They'll take these 5v4s any day of the week and 19 kills to 9. This game's still far from over. I, mean, I kind of touched upon like a, the general strategy for Secret, which I don't think has really been what they've actually done. Is you know, if this game goes long enough, they've got Sniper. They should outscale. They should outcarry. And picking Sniper to guarantee it goes late game. So if this game kind of slows down, and as long as Secret aren't too far behind, I think particularly you've got to compare the Sniper's net worth to the Blood Seekers, which right now is maybe not a pretty sight. But if Sniper you know catches up a bit, they've got the late game with this Sniper pick. I feel. Yeah, and we, we've seen time and time again. All it takes is is one team fight, one, you know, sloppy mistake or execution error, and all of a sudden that 3k gap becomes nothing. Absolutely weighs in for Secret. It's at bottom. Ruptured. Malefice on him as well, and Tiny with a combo, catching out the Enchantress. Puppy thrown into the freezing he field. He's living there. Pretty, pretty tanky. He's got a cloak. Fluffy hat, dragon lance. He can't kill this Eng. Got all the farm in the world. So Zyatz rolls back in with the onslaught trample. Rezo aiming Enigma. The black hole's not coming. Doesn't get it off in time. But Raven and Armel yet again. Right place, right time to strike back. But Enchantress and Viper close the gap. Onto DJ. Take him down. Losing the Primal Beast and Earth Spirit for a tiny Enigma is a pretty dead even trade, but Secret come out on top in terms of gold and XP change. Yeah, Armel did manage to just barely get the cleanup kill at the end on the, the Zayat's Earth Spirit, so that kind of made it a bit more even, but 
Uh, a great hold from Secret. They managed to just kind of bait Fnatic in a bit there. The initial kind of spell usage on the Primal Beast, on the Primal Beast ends up kind of biting Fnatic in the ass there a bit. They kind of commit the rupture in multiple spells and they don't actually finish him off, so they pay the price for it. But if they get Puppy here again, I mean, this is the problem. Puppy's so damn tanky. This is how they lost the last fight, is by thinking they can kill Puppy. I think they got a bit unlucky with the freezing field. It's a bit kind of RNG with the random ice explosions. Kind of, yes. if they don't land, then all of a sudden you're like, hey, this hero was next to me and took like, you know, almost no damage. So I think they did get a bit unlucky there, but uh, at the same time, Puppy's also just super tanky. 1500 health, Strength Dreads, Dragon Lance, and Glimmer Cave. Oh, he's, yeah, he's finished the Glimmer already. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. He got tossed into the Maiden. I think he only took one Freezing Field hit. A little unfortunate for Jow, but... We'll see where, where this goes now. A secret. They've smoked across to Roche. It looked like they were angling top to play into the Enigma, but they're going to go straight for Roshan. Chrysalis, what, Dragonlance? Uh, Puppy just tanking it. Oh, Puppy showing that he's the, the real core of this team alongside Nisha. That's well, yeah, they, they've got a... <laughs> Can't quite kill it fast enough. You look at the packs of net worth, right? You've got Bloodseeker at the top. He's number one. You've got this three of Sniper, Quop, Enigma. Then you've got another three of Primal Beast, Inch, and Venom, uh, the Viper there. Yeah. All very tight together. It looks like they give up on Roche for now, though. Half health and ping down by Fnatic. And DJ scouting inside the pit. As they also did get a good D-Ward Fnatic. Remove that high ground observer that Secret had not too long ago. One of the things to kind of also keep in mind as this game goes on, no easy, reliable way to stop a BKB black hole from, from Jabs. He's gone for the Aether Lens for now after the Wraith pack, but I've got to imagine that we're going to be seeing Blink Dagger, BKB as maybe follow-up items to this, and that's something that Secret are going to struggle to answer. Now, take a bit of time, though, and Fnatic... Oh, the first point of contact, the Enchantress, it's Puppy again. They will have the DJ Avatos combo, and this time they have enough damage with five heroes surrounding the Bambi. That's what it takes. Yeah. Secret. Worst smoke heading that way, but with Puppy down, I'm not sure they want to take this fight. Fnatic didn't really commit too much. It's just the, you know, standard Avatos type spell, so they're already back up, and Fnatic will more than happily maybe take this fight. It is annoying. Pushing into Shrapnel, Nether Toxin, there's all this kind of AoE wave clear that can be used pretty much without committing it, you know, any hero's bodies whatsoever. So it's very easy for Secret to kind of delay things and keep these towers alive. And you can see them not wanting to really initiate, though. Armel with this Kaya Sanj is incredibly tanky. And heading into BKB next, it's going to be a challenge to kill off the Queen of Pain or Bloodseeker who has already had his BKB for a while and just got just got the Mjolnir delivered. The big thing is just surviving like a BKB pulverized from Primal Beast. That's something which is going to be what Secret want to kind of build their team fight around. Have Primal Beast go in, catch one, and Sniper just pew pew them down. Right now, Fnatic just kind of playing these side lanes, hunting for kills. They're not really grouping as five. They don't want to play too inefficiently. They want to make sure that they keep on scaling and getting as much farm on the map as possible. Yeah, Queen of Pain, pretty adept. I'm just clearing out this more dangerous area farm down bottom. A little bit of vision here from Fnatic in the lane, but none in the jungle where Secret have swept through, dewarded, and have three observers of their own watching around their bottom outpost. So it feels like that's where Secret may be aiming to play around, even though it's 22 minutes in and we Again, have to start thinking about Roshan in the next few. Fnatic right now are just playing the map really well. They have like multiple heroes, two heroes mid, two heroes bottom, and then they had like Enigma solo pushing top with Eidolon. So you're not really risk Enigma's alone, but isn't showing. It's just the Eidolons pushing this lane. And also he's microing them. He sent one to scout Roshan to make sure that secret's not in the Roshan pit. So just honestly, very great micro and kind of map awareness coming in from Jabs. Yeah, controlling multiple zones on the map at the same time. Fnatic yeah. are going to bring numbers top, though. TPing to DJ. Jabs. They know he's up here alone. It's very frustrating to play against this Enigma who just, like, solo pushes a lane. They know he's nearby. They'll see the aura yeah. on the Eidolons if they clicked it. I found him. They were pinging it, and there's the roll on slot in. The rest of Fnatic were heading into the triangle. So Jam's dead top. But this might be a good spot here for Fnatic if they hold this high ground plateau and yep. Secret come back up towards them. They've got so much damage to throw in. Yep. 
There's no secret vision of this area. I don't think secret nowhere for Nanakar, and they may just get jumped oh. to the Roshan pit. There is a buyback on Enigma too. Can TP to the outpost here. Tiny Tree Boy, they've kind of revealed their position here, but at the same time, they've scouted out Team Secret. And now Secret a little afraid. Be alone. He's charging in with the heal. He's trying to bait with his buyback. And he knows how tanky he is, but there's a lot of damage from Fnatic. Not enough to finish him off, though. Puppy's still alive. The Sonic Wave required. And Fnatic, yes, they get the kill on the Ench, but they lose their maiden, and now they're on the run. The roll-in from Zayats, finding the Queen of Pain, and Secret, they defend their half of the map. That was so cool from Puppy. He's absolute Chad mode. Just chucks his heal on and runs up blindly onto a high ground. I thought he had buyback. He was 30 gold short. So even willing to make that play with no buyback. Because he's like, okay, it's a 5v4. We have no vision. I'm going to go give vision and set up my team to, you know, basically win this fight. Even though he throws away his own life there. He's the reason that Fnatic are able to, uh, are getting caught out there and losing the Queen of Pain. Uh, Nisha, how much gold did Nisha just get? A thousand? That Queen of Pain had a oh. massive streak. Oh my. Yeah. That was a Beyond Godlike streak. Okay. Yeah, Queen of Pain unkilled until that moment. She got BKB combined after she died. So, you know, back in Fountain, finished the item. Maybe a bit of unfortunate timing there for Fnatic if they'd been able to get that to her before the fight happened. Maybe a different outcome. But Secret starting to feel themselves again around this Roche. And they know they can head into the pit once more, force Fnatic to fight around it. Don't think Fnatic have any smokes left though, they're just walking on over. Neither support with a smoke in hand and they've just got to charge in at some point and maybe send some Eidolons out for vision, but Jabs isn't quite there yet. And Roche is incredibly low. He's dead. too late, yep. Nisha takes the Aegis, and DJ, a three-man avalanche, leads into nothing. Secret gonna turn around and get on top of the Tiny. He's absolutely dead. Raven. Tried to get a toss back. Raven just has oh. to BKB TP. He has to. Ooh. Didn't want to. Needs must, though. That's a bit of a tragedy for Fnatic. Can't contest Roche, waste the BKB, lose a Tiny. And now Secret, with, with all the space in the world, you see how forward the Zayats and Puppy get to play now. D-Ward can take control of the map. Just super heads-up play from Secret to force that Roshan yet. <laughs> He's everywhere. He's, He's not done. He's yeah. He found it. Hey, hey, lands the second roll. And the rest of Secret, they are coming, slowly but surely, trying to filter on forward to connect in with it. So Jabs, he, he solo blacks all... <sighs> Black Hole's the Earth Spirit, but that's just not worth it whatsoever. Queen of Pain's gonna Sonic Wave, but again, just Zayat is not dead. Earn charges, heals from Ench, Glimmer Cave, and Holy Locket from Puppy. Tons of heals and sustain from Secret, keep them alive. Yeah, and for Fnatic, you're thinking, oh crap, we have no ultis now. No Black Hole, no Sonic Wave, and they have Aegis. Let's, they cannot fight for the next two minutes. There's nothing I feel like Fnatic can really do here, except play Keep Away. Armel's going to TP mid right into multiple secret heroes here. If you're secret, you're thinking, let's just keep on hunting. Let's try to see what more we can find. A Crystal Maiden up top should be easy pickings for them. And Zayas is going to be looking to set up another kill. Yeah, we were talking about DJ's impact in 14 out of 16 earlier on. Zayas, similar story. Getting in there with resolution. 15 out of the 17 kills here have been due to Zayas and his rotations. Is Earth Spirit, much like his Nyx Assassin, just the one setting up so many kills for this secret team. And now Secret have free reign over the map with Aegis in hand. They're just going to push all these out of towers, <laughs> take the tier two top. I just realized I've not said uh, a single word about Viper, his spells or Chrysalis. Like I've, not, I've, not, I've not, said, not said his name in 10 minutes. What's he up to? There's a Viper in this game? Yeah. <laughs> really, Gareth? You sure? I, I, I see it with my own eyes. He's got he's got a BKB even. Uh, he's online. I can't. He's, he's there we go. He's back. Um, yeah, no, no, this is not flame for Chrysalis. This has just been the way this game... Sometimes games just go a direction where one player just doesn't get to play Dota, but the other four do. Uh, and, you know, Chrysalis is finally at a point where he can, you know, contribute. <laughs> play some Dota too. Cast some spells and have some fun. Uh, yeah, even though, I don't know, in, in my head, secret here, they've 
They've got a good grasp on this game, but Fnatic are the ones with the net worth lead. Is this still a good indication of them scaling around this Enigma? Or do you think the fact that Sniper is, is so big now that Secret are looking good? Yeah, for, from my perspective, they're, they're definitely at a disadvantage, like just going into late game. I think the Sniper does well against Enigma, even though they don't have a reliable answer to the BKB Black Hole. I think it's just very hard to ever get Black Hole on Sniper because of his range so and if you black hole someone else sniper is just going to mask a madness right click you down and enigma is going to basically die during the black hole so um i do feel like the sniper is kind of the x factor of this game um but blink bloodseeker he's itemizing on top of sniper they, they do have you know they're trying to find ways to deal with sniper and get on top of him it's just it's hard like secret have to me a 60 40 edge moving forward okay and they've even got tiny building into the agonim scepter dj looking to yeah. scale hardcore I mean, that's definitely, I, I feel like that's one of the kind of things that often you look at games like this and just kind of think about like how late game goes, but scaling supports is going to be a big part of this specific game. Like, Edge has almost 10k net worth. The tiny you mentioned almost has an Ag Scepter sitting on 7.5k net worth. We're only 30 minutes in, so super rich supports are going to be impacting this game way more than they normally would in terms of actually being carries as well. Yeah, absolutely. Fnatic, just keeping that bottom lane pushed in for now. Try and deal, contend with that mid wave push with Queen of Pain just blinking and screaming. Well, this is absolutely secret, planting themselves in the top third of the map, making sure to cut out mid and top waves. Usually using the remaining seconds of this Aegis just to try and outfarm their opponents across multiple lanes. Whereas Fnatic kind of heavily grouped in that bottom jungle, getting what they can. And now TPing back. There's a long lane to shove out here, down bottom. Yeah, I think for Fnatic, this is kind of what you wanted, just to not have too much action during the Aegis timer. They don't really want to fight into it. Not to mention, as earlier, their cooldowns, they were missing their black hole and things. And they're probably thinking, like, let's let's try and play around our, like some of these late-game timings, the blink black hole a bit more now. Um, up until now, they've not really been trying to play around Black Hole, but I think it's time that they start thinking of it as more as their kind of win condition for team fights. And that I see ward. Nisha alone. Yeah. They saw Nisha on the ward, on the outpost. On the outpost. They blow yeah. him up. Destroyed. No one from Secret anywhere nearby to help him. And Zayas with Chrysalis, they've got to smoke and try and run away. I mean, they saw him on the ward, but also he just kind of solo tries to take an outpost. That was very risky. Put a Black Hole for Viper. <laughs> thinking about it. I have to with the BKB up. It. Raven, yeah, DJ like to come back in. They've got the right clicks and the Sonic Wave to secure it. He went for a BKB TP. I guess they black hole there, but because I think Viper knowing that doesn't want to go for a BKB TP. Probably worth it just to force black hole out. But either way, Fnatic fight two back to back core kills. Um, and that's a yeah, really nice find. Like showing, I mean, I, I don't think that's really showing they have an answer to Sniper. I think that's just like a, a great smoke move from them where they catch him out, but curious to see how things go from here for Fnatic. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious, did you see if Puppy had the gem before they swept through bottom jungle, or has he just picked it up now? I don't know. Yeah, it felt like maybe they could have dewatered their jungle before, because you know, there was a pack of three in like the bottom right corner where a sniper was at the outpost, and maybe that uh, observer ward's gonna get cleared out now by Puppy's Enchantress, I'd assume. See both teams probably start looking to set up around this Roshan pit. Radiant sentries have already dewatered most of the area. But both teams know Roshan is going to be the next key objective for this game. Yeah, and BKB not far away from Enigma. It's very curious to see what that timer on Rosh is and whether or not Jabs has the time he needs to finish off that, that key item. You were mentioning there's no way to cancel the big black hole with a BKB up for him. He's getting closer and closer to it. And he's just such a nuisance. Yeah. The Eidolons, the ghost push, the phantom push, whatever it is, just shoving wave and Enigma hiding in the trees. And Secret paying it no mind though, playing top. It just doesn't feel like, okay, they'll TP someone back now to like push the lane, but it's definitely not worth like trying to hunt the Enigma. I mean, they, they made it work once in the top lane, but that's because it was in the top lane in an area of the map they want to play in. If, if, Secret don't want to come down bottom, but with multiple heroes when Roche is respawning soon, you kind of just have to let Jabs keep on solo pushing this lane because you're just wasting time. And there's a chance, hey, he, he's positioned on a ward, he pops your smoke, blinks away, and gets out. So if you send multiple heroes bottom and don't kill him, you're wasting so much time. 
and there we have it. Puppy gets the Observer Ward at long last. Okay. While Zayat's deep behind enemy lines, TP's back to rejoin his team. And Enigma has BKB, so Fnatic are well set up for this next Roshan in a minute's time. Yeah, Jao buying the smoke. That's what's going to give them the edge. And Raven. Oh, sorry, Ar Armel. He's got fanatic.armel.raven. So I look, I look at the Queen of yeah. Pain. I was like, yeah, Raven. No, nope. <laughs> no, nope, that's Armel. Yep. He's got a DD rune, but that will un unfortunately likely expire before the Roshan fight really begins. Wait, touch upon Rezo and his TI performances. Raven's been another guy who has gone beast mode at multiple TIs. Puppy. That's why Armel's paying respect to him. And yeah, they are looking to counterplay this one. And she'll buy a lot of time. And Zayat with his BKB just rolling from one target to another. A nice tree volley there and a sonic wave, but Puppy's still alive. They've expended a lot while Zayat's ruptured and killed by this big Bloodseeker of Raven. 30 seconds for Roche as Secret. Another BKB oh this God. time from the Viper. Jabs BKB. Jabs with a blink looking He's for looking Black for Hole. Sniper. He was aiming for it, but he'll just have to Black Hole the Viper instead. Yeah. Kill off what remnants of Secret are left. And Rezo with a BKB TP does allow him to Viper. Jabs BKB. Jabs with a blink looking He's for looking Black for Sniper. Hole. He was aiming for it, but he'll just have to Black Hole the Viper instead. Yeah. Kill off what remnants of Secret are left. And Rezo with a BKB TP does allow him to escape from the scenario. But 10 seconds for Roche gives Fnatic a, a great opportunity here to secure yeah. this portion of the mid game. I, I mean, Puppy just buys so much time staying alive, but ultimately, like, Secret just don't have the numbers or formation to win the fight, regardless of how much damage Puppy was soaking up there. Uh, they just weren't ready. Like, they had three heroes there, and, uh, you know, I think Nisha does all he can. Like, he positions so far back because he knows this Enigma is looking for a BKB black hole. I think both Jabs as well as Nisha played that team fight pretty perfectly. Jabs is just waiting, looking for Sniper, and he catches a glimpse of where he is in the trees, charge, like, blinks forward looking for him, but Nisha almost sees it coming and kind of counterplays it. But the end result is Sniper does zero damage in the fight because he, he can't come near without getting Black Hole. So the threat of the Black Hole we kind of talk about is sometimes better than the Black Hole itself. And that is kind of how that fight went down. The Black Hole ended yeah. up not really doing a whole lot. Yeah, you could, uh, you could see in the replay there, it's uh, Januel. He's gonna get pummeled down. But the fact that Jabs basically just put out Wraith Pact and, and hid on this dire side of the river in the mid lane yeah. for a good 20, 30 seconds, just waiting, waiting. He could have had, you know, two, three-man Black Hole onto the Earth Spirit, Ench, Primal Beast, but he says, nope. Like you said, just looking for the Sniper. That's his job. Yep. Oh, top lane. Rezo looking for a move in onto DJ, but he's got the Ogre Seal Totem to flop back into the tree line. Uh, Zayat is going to miss a couple of spells, but Rezo, he can't miss the Pulverize. Decent range on that initiation and allows Nisha to open up, get the Tiny in his sights. Raven, Armel, they've jumped in onto Chrysalis, forced the Viper to BKB early on. He tries to pop his one to survive, but a Sonic Wave comes in to allow Raven to clear through the Viper. And a beyond godlike Bloodseeker now, 11, 1, and 10 for Raven. I love how after they, they just ignore Puppy, they're like, yeah, we hit him with Sonic Wave, but we ain't killing him. <laughs> like, this Ench is untouchable. You may live. Just yeah. please, <laughs> go away. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, they, they trade cores. Um, I mean, I say cores. Tiny kind of feels like a core, but um, he's not really a core. Um, I think for Fnatic, they're the ones playing with Aegis, but they've got to be a little bit careful because Secret's making another smoke move. They're bringing Nishi in once again, knowing that some of these big ultimates are down. Raven, he's got Aegis here, but... Surrounded by three heroes. Yeah, he blinked into the trees, but this lane ward about to expire has given Secret all the vision in the world to take the Aegis down. And Jabs, with no black hole for 20 seconds, has popped his BKB to try and live. Rezo chases Raven back. Jabs dies in the right-hand tree line, and the dive under tower kills off Raven. Rezo solos him. 100 to 0 in a matter of seconds, and onslaughting back across to the Maiden. Find out John well, and this time it's Secret to come in. Sweep through, get three massive kills. Oh, they're just honestly so quick with that smoke and catching Fnatic with this like tiny window. It was 10 seconds until Black Hole was coming back up. They knew Sonic Wave had been used mid as well. They knew Rupture was also on cooldown. So this very small window where Fnatic weren't ready to fight, didn't have ulties, and they catch them. They just go charging at a Bloodseeker with an Aegis knowing that we can just kill him twice, force Fnatic to respond to it, and Enigma responding like without a Black Hole, he, they were just not afraid of that Enigma. No, no. No fear whatsoever. And Rezo, 
He's an absolute beast. Tanking up tier three. Kaya Sanj done and a blink dagger. If he spots a hero, he's jumping on them. And this looks like Elena Barracks for secret. Nisha from the low ground just plinking away at the melee. Could even go finish the range if they want to. Zero interest in defending on the Fnatic side. Just the one lane of Rax at this stage of the game, something that they, you know, they can deal pretty well with. Um, but the big issue is, like, you know, this the secret, we talked about some of the late game strength of their, their lineup with, with the oh, sniper. Rezo? Yes. Force the BKB. Okay. Sorry, that, that looked a little more right. interesting than it was in the end. Yeah, we're going to see Fnatic just gear up to play some late game Dota here. Jabs Enigma is the, the player to look for in all these fights with that black hole. And anytime oh, yeah. they don't have black hole, I think if you're a fanatic, you're just like, I don't think you should be taking a fight. Hey, you'll have to excuse the fake hype from time to time. I mean, with the, where this game is going, you see someone charging in, you expect yeah. kills. <laughs> no, no kidding. <laughs> 22 to 28, we're 40 minutes in. A real back and forth between these two teams, and uh, I'm struggling to get a read on the the flow of this game. There's, there's no net worth lead, no real kill lead. What what yeah. what what do these mid game team fights come down? Is it just jabs with this black hole, or are there uh, smaller things, smaller details to look for? I think it's this. Yeah, there's this little battle going on between jabs and Nisha, where Nisha just has to play really far back and hide from the Enigma. Uh, and also Jabs has to hide, like he can't afford to get caught by any of Secret's heroes. Like if Urspirit finds the Enigma, yeah, he's got BKB and he's not gonna be able to kill the Enigma, but it's all about stopping the blink. So if you just get on top of him, um, you know, stop the blink, use an urn charge on him to, you know, make him BKB or something, all of a sudden Sniper can actually hit people. So it's this hiding game going on um, all around, for the most part, the Enigma. And there's also these, you know, there's there's other heroes. That's where, you know, while all that's going on, you have heroes like Ench and Tiny who have become true carries as well. The toss back, Puppy, the target again, but Rezo and Zayats, they've turned onto DJ. The initiation from Fnatic quickly turned on his head. And he's dead for a minute. That's quite some time now where Secret have the 5v4. Yeah. Every time they go on Puppy, bad things happen, it feels like. Like, there's not really been a successful fight that started, like, they maybe won some fights where they went on puppy but it's not because they went on puppy like he always seems to be living they throw some spells and it's like they're just putting these spells on cooldown maybe they have baited secret in and won the fight afterwards but fights like that one it's just like well he lived on 500 health they weren't actually that close to killing the edge he's frontlining again scanning up to the high ground clearing some of this dire vision which right now is, is severely lacking. The map is dark outside of creep waves for Fnatic. I don't see where Secret are lurking, and from the shadows, yeah. Secret are looking to strike down bottom. Janoel with a glimmer cape. Looks like he's got the distance to blink TP from the tree line. Oh no, he didn't blink. He just tried the TP naked, and Rezo Zayas there straight in on top of her. Yeah. Didn't. I mean, he thought he had a nice little hiding spot, but it's like a pretty common hiding spot. And Urspirit knew when he, he rolled to the right, he didn't find him. So he kind of knew the only way he could have gone is into those trees. So definitely a scenario where, like you say, should have blinked, but pays the price. Fnatic, only a CM kill, but it does mean every time like a kill happens, it feels like they're giving up ground on the map and Secret are just pushing forward, taking more farm and taking control of key areas where Fnatic want to be farming. Yeah, still a minute and a half for Fastball on Roche. So if Secret can use this dire Ancient's high ground area to hold on to mid and bottom lane, kind of keep Fnatic back in their base. But more importantly, you're limiting the angles of attack. You don't want to be facing Fnatic in a, in a choke point. As it looks like DJ, yeah, just a step too far forward. Again, being found out by Zaya to that spirit. I mean, what, what, what is he now? 22 out of the 25? Like 95% kill participation from this Earth Spirit is bonkers. That is very, very impressive. <laughs> yeah, as long as Secret can play in, it feels like open ground. They want, they want, you know, open water basically. A flat bit of land to team fight in. Fnatic much more opting for these choke point fights. Try and find, yeah, a, a bit of terrain on the map to play with this black hole. They want, yeah, and more just hiding spots in general. Like when you're in these open areas, it's a lot harder to find a good pathway to get initiation, but. Amazing neutral line for Jabs, Ninja Gear. So he can be smoked up for any single fight. Uh, it really puts a lot more pressure on someone like Zayats to kind of roll in and try and scout him out. So this is yeah. dream 
neutral. It's kind of, I feel like Ninja is his funny neutral item. Like, Ice Rock kind of, I don't know, thought of it as like a carry on giving it plus 25 agi, but it never right. seems to be agi heroes using Ninja gear. And it kind of felt better when agi gave move speed and it was like, nice, I'm smoked, <laughs> I've got move speed, but yeah, yeah. Yep. <laughs> You're right, it's a bit of an odd one. He's getting armor from it. That'll help versus the sniper, I guess. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> so Wonderful. Maybe we'll say, hey, watch that. Watch him live on like 100 health all because of that armor. <laughs> Well, that's a, that's a quick Roche spawn. Scanning. Dire scanning it. Yeah. Did it. I don't know if it just flickered red there for a second as Nisha walked past. Fnatic going to pay it no mind, though, and head down south. Again, they're not not playing into vision here. It is all dark in that bottom jungle. And the first person they see is going to be Crystalis. Janwell walks into it, and Rezzo is here with his BKB, not afraid to use it because he has Refresher Orb. An opportunity to launch a second attack, striking into the heart of Fnatic's aggressive line. Raven, half HP, but the black hole is there, catching up Earth Spirit as Nisha it's was able to get the though. gap. He did not get the sniper. In comes the tree volley, though, from DJ. Cancelled out as they stun and catch the Tiny. Raven and Armel. They lose the blood secret and buy back on him. Tiny down, though, is secret. They are keeping themselves alive and chasing the Queen of Pain. A quick little cyclone from the Stormcraft abides the time for the blink from Armel. All oh, the pulverize. Rezzo finds the stun to get Nisha the triple kill. The spell prism, the 21 second cooldown pulverize with a refresher orb as well. The third pulverize of the fight. And a fight, again, comes down so much to can you catch this sniper in black hole? And Nisha's positioning was just out of range. He just stood his ground. They couldn't touch the sniper. They got on top of him with like Tiny and Bloodseeker, but Nisha with Satanic and all the items he's got, he gets ruptured. He's like, okay, I'll just, I'm, I'm standing still. Like this rupture does nothing to me. We'll see it all again here, but yeah, what a fight for Secret. He'll be rewarded with a free Aegis. Just, I mean, it starts badly losing the CM and Rezo just having these free initiations. The Refresher all being such a key timing for him and Team Secret. Finds a haste rune as well in the middle of the yeah. team fight. I see, see that jam. This sniper, this sniper yeah. just never gets below half health. Just stands his ground, the auto turret, whacking away at people. And now we have it. Aegis for Nisha, Cheese for Crystalis. And Fnatic, what, well, they spent a couple of buybacks for that. Raven, probably the most important one. So losing out on his timing for that Lincoln Sphere. Delaying his item progression. The scarier thing is you're losing your buildings very quickly here. Puppy, he's tanking up on the front lines. High ground shove, Nisha in behind him. And Fnatic without Black Hole don't have a great way to make a jump here. They, they need refresh on this Enigma. He's got the double Perseverance, still doesn't quite have it. He's ignoring buyback as you should. 40 seconds until Black Hole. I think you just give up Lanes of Rax. You want double Black Hole for the fight. And for Jack, I feel like he needs to use his Ninja Gear to like, smoke around from behind, even if he does so solo. And it's it's super risky. Like You run into heroes, you may just die and feed, but you're now down four Rax and in this kind of desperation place. I think Jabs just needs to take some chances when it comes to trying to catch this Sniper on the back lines. Yeah, drastic measures needed. Yep. Especially if Nisha gets his hand on this DD rune that spawned down bottom. Zayats, it looks like he's going to scout it out in a sec. No, I don't see it. Secret opting to just keep on pushing out these waves. Keep Fnatic hemmed back in their base. I mean, Rezo now with Refresher Shard and Refresher Orb. Multiple <laughs> BKB. So many forms of oh initiation. Boy. He has been a nuisance this game. Yep. It's... A farmed up Primal Beast, level 27 as well, so pulverized piercing magic immunity just making his game even easier. Man, everyone's buying refresher orbs. Bloodseeker's got one. You mentioned the, the Enigma, very close to his, can now buy the recipe. All the nerfs in the world in this item still is the item that Lake Gimdo has played around. Um, you know, it's it's nice that it, the item isn't quite what it used to be and has that big mana cost and all that, but we'll see if these refreshes are going to be or take Secret over the finish line with the Primal Beast or if Enigma finds a way to get off these double black holes. <laughs> and just look at the chat wheels there, the pings, right? It, it's exactly what you've been talking about. DJ saying, hey, Earth Spirit's missing. Look out for Science. Watch out yeah. for him. Secret thinking about the Enigma. Yeah, Enigma's but... missing. Be careful. And he's, I just feel like, like seeing where Jabs is positioned now, like just sitting behind this tower smoked up, it's kind of like the predictable place to be. I think, I mean, at the same time, Secret out pushing high ground, but I think it, when, when a fight's happening, he needs to be like looping around to the left, trying to 
he needs to find some kind of entry pathway that's just a little bit unorthodox because right now it just feels like everything he's doing is a bit too telegraphed. Yeah, it, it kind of feels like with no buyback on Enigma or the Bloodseeker that it's it's down to Armel to kind of blink in, you know, overzealously almost. Yeah. Play hyper aggressive, then use his buyback as that that kind of dogpile mechanism where Secret have jumped the quap mm. and open up a black hole opportunity for jabs. Yeah, I, I love that idea. I think that's baiting with buybacks is so crucial for late game Dota, and I think Armel, yeah, definitely the the perfect hero to do it with. I guess Bloodseeker once his buybacks back up can kind of do the same, but. Pop just feels like a more natural hero to kind of charge forward. I guess the the big problem is you just get pulverized by this primal beast and you don't really have the most reliable of saves against that. Well, they caught a glimpse of jabs and DJ, the tiny, he went straight on in towards Nisha, but he's just being annihilated. Has buyback on the tiny and he's going to have to spend it. This final lane of barracks secret, they're chipping away at it. And a move has to be made. Armel makes the jump. Uh, gets back to high ground. They're trying to bid. Has buyback on the tiny, and he's going to have to spend it. This final lane of barracks secret, they're chipping away at it. And a move has to be made. Armel makes the jump. Uh, gets back to high ground. They're trying to bait secret a little bit deeper here before making the jump. Fnatic just want to tick away at this Aegis, killing the sniper twice, getting double black hole off is just so hard to do, so... There's the jump! Rezo, the black Ooh, hole, black hole. Fnatic! Jabs has the engine, the sniper caught up, but the damage is lacking, gets the refresher off, the second black hole comes! Jabs has caught them, but the freezing field, the damage on the sniper is good! Still good ages. First life down, and Chrysalis stands his ground! MBKB. Being hammered by this Bloodseeker though, as Zayas back in with a magnetize, clears through Raven, Armel very low on the HP, but they lost their primal beast! The Viper's dead. The high ground push has been halted. Fnatic Raven. quell the aggression from Secret, and Armel blinks back in onto the Sniper. They've caught him with a Frostbite. Puppy, what can he do to save his buddy? Because Nisha with the BKB turns and hits them. The hits from the crit set of DJ's tree tosses. Good damage, but not enough. Nisha's Sniper. He just so held his BKB. incredibly powerful. Comes yeah. back in for another round and volley of flurrying blows. Takes down the tiny Bloodseeker and Maiden and looks for the Mega Creeps now. Yeah, honestly, I spent that entire fight just watching what Nisha did and he just single-handedly plays that team fight perfect. The fact they have to double Black Hole just to kill him once wins Secret, the fight and the game. He comes back, blinks immediately away and just repositions. Doesn't rush his BKB to get rid of Frostbite or anything. Just positions and just keeps right clicking. And there's no answer from Fnatic if they can't get on top of this sniper. He's just outranging everybody and four dead. GG comes out. Nisha, the hero of this game, with a fantastic sniper performance. Yeah, having so many lives. Aegis, Satanic, the backup from Puppy. Everything to save the sniper here. As he keeps Fnatic in his reticle and takes them all down. Game one to secret. Not, not a simple affair by any means, though, with lane swaps, aggression, all sorts of noise in that laning stage. It was an incredibly close-fought battle for the first, the first what, 30 minutes? Yeah, I, I, this was a great game of Dota. This felt like TI-caliber Dota. I think both teams overall played.